Hello. Okay. So, hello. Hello. So my... hello. 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 Hi. Hi. We're still getting there. Well, I just want to say a big welcome to everyone today. Um, welcome to the show today. God, it is warm out there. It's so warm, but it is beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So, as usual, this is MK Afrobeam, and I want to welcome everybody, both those on the platform and those um, listening to us out there, uh, to all our back, Black community, to all our Asian community, to all the communities in Milton Keynes. I want to say good afternoon to you and welcome to our show again. I'm just going to quickly introduce um, MIG Productions and this MK Afrobeam and what we do within the community and also introduce our special guest for today. So, um, MK Afrobeam is a community engagement show which is organized by MIG Productions. So we are a voluntary organization in Milton Keynes. We promote the aspirations of the unemployed who are over 18 with creative skills in the community and we also support the community with basic and vital information needed to promote their well-being and their general uh, lifestyle. So today we will be discussing issues on cancer re research, barriers to cancer re uh, research. Why are we not aware of where the supports, of supports that are available when we have issues with cancers? Um, how do we get this information? Who do we go to to get this information? What is stopping us from getting this information? And to discuss this today, we have Ms. Susan Nelson, <laughs> who, who works on behalf of Macmillan, Cancer Macmillan. However, she also works with the Community Action MK here in Milton Keynes to just discuss basic information or give us the details on how we can get the support required concerning cancer. So it's just a tester session. It's not gonna be a medical probe. It's just gonna be simple information um, to gear us and to, keep, to make us aware of what to do when these issues arises. So uh, also with us, we've got Ms. Bumi, Mr. Bumi Akuri Misi, our co-host. Hello, Mr. Bumi, how are you today? Hi, how Hello? are you? Good afternoon. Uh, it's a also, very warm day. It is, it is warm. Also, we've got Mandy Fox as well, a very good friend of um, Susan, who's here to support the course. Hello, Mandy. Hello, everybody. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. So, Susan, hi. Hello. So I'm going to concentrate on you. So, hi, hello, and just introduce yourself to us briefly, please, if you don't mind. Yeah, so I'm Sue, Community Mobiliser with Community Action, MK, and the two things that Community Action do, they help um, groups set up a charity groups, people that want to do volunteering. So there's that side of it. And the other side is, and what this is about is connecting with communities and groups and, and finding out about issues that groups have. And one of the projects that I'm involved with is, so I don't, I don't actually work for Macmillan, but Macmillan have come to um, Community Action to ask us if we can connect with um, communities um, so BAME um, communities and faith communities to find out um, two things at this stage, um, what the barriers are for people to access Macmillan cancer support and also to find out from people ideas about how Macmillan can um, connect with people in the community because Macmillan would like to hopefully perhaps would like more people to come in to them, but they would also like to find out how they can go out in the community and engage with people. And that's, I'd like to listen to people's ideas okay. today. Fantastic. Well, here we go, Mr. Bumi. This is a pressing, a very important discussion, isn't it? Yes, very, very key. Um, since we've got the information that um, you help communities of this information has to do with cancer, I believe. Correct? Oh. Yes, yeah, it's okay. so, yeah. Oh, so. All right, okay. One of the first things that I would just like to, you know, because it's going to be an interactive session as much as possible, um, to get the basic information out there because ultimately this particular um, um, production 
is going to be shared on our various platforms. It's going to be shared on our various platforms. So definitely some of the questions will basically deal with the issue that has to do with how do people get information, access to one or two couple of things with respect to I hope that's that's okay with you, Susan. Yeah, I've also got a connection with a lady called Faye and she works um, at the Macmillan Cancer Support Wellbeing Lounge in Central Milton Keynes Hospital. And she would like, she is the expert. I think she's worked there for, I might be wrong, 15 years or something like that. And I think, well, either 20 and she's done 15 by, her own, by herself. And now she's got someone with her for the last five years. So she, she really is the expert and she will be able to come to another meeting. But I can, I, I've got a little bit, of, well, I've got my basic knowledge of what yeah. McMillan is. Um, so I can help a little bit. Um, and I can always forward any questions to Faye as well. So, okay. yeah, so I'm just okay. a starting link, really. Okay. So that's just, Start, okay. Starting from the basics, um, I don't know, what do you think are the barriers? Is barriers why people, especially in Black community, have, have access to this information? Yeah. Um, why do I think? Um, no. Talking, or, or is that a, just a, a general question to all of us? Mm. I think it's true. It is a general question, mm. and I think it's not because, like you say, you 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 want to know what the barrier is, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we I mean, are having this problem. I, but I mean, I think it's a fair question to me. I mean, I've spoken to Faye, and Faye is wondering, thinking, um, is is there language barriers for people um because like i was saying to my friend mandy you know yes they, they do have interpreters they do have telephone interpreters um but um they are telephone interpreters and that's not always easy um you know i know from my work background i know mandy does using telephone interpreters is not always that ideal you know so that's although there's interpreters are those interpreters interpreted in a way that people really want do you, want, do you just want someone on the phone? Um, also, do people actually know of, do people know about Macmillan Cancer Support? Do, do, do they know? Um, and and how, how do people know? Maybe Macmillan are not um, getting the messages out there in the way that people find it easy to get messages. Yep. Well, Can you I'm tell sure. us a little bit about Macmillan? Yeah, so Macmillan. So I've got my little details here. <laughs> um, so what we've got in Milton Keynes is we've got the Irene Crosswell Macmillan Wellbeing Lounge, um, and that's in the new cancer centre. But I, I think a lot of hospitals, because I'm from Norfolk originally, and I think Norwich has got a really great new um, cancer um, centre as well, because. Um, my mum passed away about 18 months ago of cancer and I know that my brother said oh we've got a great new cancer centre so they might have quite a few of the new centres all, all over England in the hospitals but I know they've definitely got one in Milton Keynes and that's where Macmillan have got their wellbeing lounge and I'm just going to read what Faye has sent me um, so she has and she's a Macmillan wellbeing nurse she said um, so Macmillan aimed to provide information and support to anyone affected by cancer in Milton Keynes and the surrounding areas. We have printed audio and visual information, information in languages other than English, pictorial information for people with learning disabilities and challenges, information for children and information in braille. So these are the things that they currently have, um, but they'd welcome ideas if someone's got any other ideas, if there's things they've missed. Um, we also provide one-to-one -one emotional support for anyone affected by cancer at any stage. Mm -hmm. This could be the um, worried, as someone that's worried, but they're well. This could be the worried well. Um, new, so you might be, you might, you, you might want to know. Um, say, say, like for me, worried well, could, that could be an example of me. My grandmother died of bowel cancer mm -hmm. and my mum had bowel cancer three times. She had it in her 50s, in her 80s, and then she died of it in her 90s. So I could be a worried well person. I could be like, I'm so worried about this. Is it going to happen to me? So I could talk to them about my concerns. Um, newly diagnosed, 
um, people receiving treatment, people in the palliative settings, and that's people that it is believed that they're going to be passing away. Um, so someone that has been told that they're not going to get better from cancer, they might not want to upset their friends and their family, but they might find talking to a neutral person easier yeah. to do. So that's something that they do as well. We also provide support for their families and friends, children and young people, um, and anyone really that would like to yeah. go and talk to them about the issue of cancer. Um, and Faze also said, we run a variety of groups um, in normal times. For example, the Macmillan Wellbeing Support Groups, um, Beyond the Sea Choir, which sounds really nice, and Hope Courses. Now, I'm not sure what Hope Courses are, so that's something that Faye could talk about. <laughs> yeah. He definitely is the expert. Um, Look Good, Feel Better Workshops, yeah. um, Bereavement Support, um, and some of these groups are currently virtual. So, and in the Macmillan Wellbeing Team, they have two specialist nurses, so that's Faye and her other person. Um, they have a physiotherapist, um, a psychologist, dietitians, and they have a, a general coordinator. And in addition, they have a radio advanced, a radiotherapy advanced practitioner, and a Macmillan Citizens Advice caseworker. And she's kindly given her details, um, which can be forwarded to you. So she's given a, a phone number, but I don't know how easy it is to get through on the phone because I've tried and <laughs> so I think the best way is to probably email. There's a general email address, and um, I know Faye is happy to share her email address. So, and Faye works, Faye, and she's lovely, and she works Thursdays and Fridays, eight to six. Okay. So that's that in a nutshell, and I think that does cover. Fantastic. So, what everything. I'm going to do, thank you so much for yeah. info, giving us that information. I'm going to share this information you just um, read out now. I'm going to share yeah. it on the screen. Yes. So, I... just in case, because if anyone wants to see, it, if we record the video, they can always go back yes. and pick it up. Or you, when I send the video to you, it's in there. Uh, sorry, I'm just going to decline that. Sorry. So um, just give me a second and then we'll share that um, page now. In the meantime, um, so Macmillan's, um, this um, well-being lounge in Milton Keynes. Um, okay, you can't even give us that. Um, how long has it been established? Do you know? Hmm, I don't know because it's a new cancer centre, mm -hmm. but I know and I know that Faye has worked for Macmillan in Milton Keynes for definitely at least 15 years so I don't know how long the Irene Crosswell Macmillan Wellbeing Lounge has been there for it I'm sorry it just cut me off now um so can you all see what I'm sharing or has it gone off again yeah, it's it's gone gone off. Off. yeah. we saw it earlier mm -hmm. every time I try sharing I don't know why it does that I'm gonna try again and um, while you're trying, I was going to ask Sue, is it a self-referral process for patients to Macmillan? I don't know that either. <laughs> definitely, oh. I'll definitely email Faye and ask Faye. Oh. Yeah, Lovely. that's a great question though. Thank you, Sue. Yeah. You definitely can email Faye. Thank you. Yeah. Great. Just let me know if it's coming up. That's come up. Okay, it's great. Coming. So based on what you've just said, so the Iron Crosswell Macmillan Wellbeing Lounge in the center, Cancer Center MK, that is in the Milton Keynes um, General Hospital, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah. Okay. I don't know where it is there either. <laughs> Again, okay. I could direct anyone how to go there. So, okay. um, yeah. Fantastic. I mean, it might, it might oh, well, COVID changes things, doesn't it? But I was going to say it might be a place that potentially someone could go and have a look at if they wanted, but I don't know about with COVID. It's not, they probably won't want it at the moment, but... Um, there might be, you know, Faye might have some photographs or something that she can send to people or, you know. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. And in there, we can speak with Faye and Faye is the lady in charge of it all. So they've got um, physiotherapists, psychologists, dietitians, coordinator, uh, radio, radiotherapy, advanced practitioner, and a citizen's advice caseworker. You know, that's the thing. First, what most people do 
is a go straight to the need support. The, what we, are, what I understand that most of us do is go straight to the Citizens Advice Center. Mm -hmm. And having them within this group is very helpful mm -hmm. because more, most people believe that I think we have more trust for the Citizens Advice Center mm -hmm. because every time you go in there, the information you get or they, they give us uh, is very, to the whole community is very vital. You know, and so people have that confidence to go in there and share their 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 problems and their griefs, knowing that there's always a solution. So making having them within the group will help them. So some people will say, "Oh, I don't want to speak with the nurse first. Let me just speak with someone from the citizens' advice bureau," mm -hmm. um, and that will that is very very important. Mm -hmm. So as you can see there, um, we've got the million information in there. I'm going to add this onto the chat, and I'm also going to add this onto the. Um, on to Facebook, please, if you need to speak to anyone, the phone numbers will be there, the email address is there. Faye Gretsch Margaret will give you all the information you need. Uh, she will support you. And then uh, we've got Faye's email, which is uh, you know, is there. The Macmillan info is there as well. And she walks between the hours of Thursdays and Fridays, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Fantastic. That is a very, very vital information in there. And as we can see, we all know about Macmillan. They've done a lot of work, not just um, locally, internationally as well, and within the, the country as a whole. Now, concerning the question we're asking on why people, we're going to discuss some of the barriers. You've talked about language. Yes, language is a big problem. Mm -hmm. I agree with you, Susan. Mandy, what do you think? <laughs> Um, I think it's it's very complicated. I think for everybody, uh, for example, with COVID, we've we, we we've all been afraid to approach the NHS because we 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 know they're overburdened. But I think there's lots of factors. I think even within cultures, it might the difference between men and women might be different. We we know men are sort of a bit more shy of, of seeking help and support networks. Absolutely. Yeah, there may be cultural issues. I, I know uh, a bit of, I know from my experiences, being up my son, they, you know, maybe a, a mistrust, a, a fear of unconscious bias towards groups. And right. um, yeah, and, um, and so also, I think- Also, yeah, I agree, I agree, I agree with you. Um, uh, in my, I'm going to tell you as an African lady, correct me if I'm wrong, Bumi, we don't go about, unlike the Western world, we don't go about telling our secrets to everyone. So most times when, when they think, when they think, someone I've got cancer, they think, oh, don't call me. Ooh, there's, there's this fear of um, people will no longer want me. I will no longer belong. I will no longer be, oh, mm -hmm. I'm going to die. And not just about what people think, it's also about what's going to happen to my family, who's going to take care of them. If I tell them I've got cancer, uh, I may lose my job, you know, or, 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 you know, who's going to take care of my children. So in the process of doing that, most African court people, we just get on with it. They get on with it. And that is the, that is the problem. The fear of the unknown, the fear of what will be if I say I've got the sickness, the fear of Will I still be accepted within the community? Will I still be accepted within my family? Will I still be, or will I, my job still accept me? Or will I not have enough energy to keep on working? And, and that's generally. But then in the aspect of the men, the ego comes in like, oh, if I can't provide for my family, you know, if I tell them this, there will be no more respect. Um, um, they, they'll think I'm weak, you know, and they don't want to say anything. And, uh, you know, and that is bad, absolutely wrong. Not just that, most of our African men, this is something, a discussion we've had here before, Bumi, correct me if, I, if I'm wrong. Our African men uh, don't like going to the doctors. You know, they feel, oh, I'm strong, I can do this. Even though they feel dizzy, even though they feel tired, even though they feel weak, even though they feel hungry, even though they feel a headache, they say, oh, they just take like, and go, but it's, it's not, it's, it, they don't want to go. And in, in that process of not wanting to reach out, of not wanting to speak out, of not wanting to, find out if I'm well, even though they invite them for this yearly checkup and not going out there to check themselves, something is developing in their body. It could be lung cancer, it could be prostate cancer, which is one of the most deadly cancer disease that's killing African men today, uh, and colon cancer, and, you know, stomach cancer, they just leave it. 
and before you know it, it grows. You know what I'm saying? It grows and then it's times it's too late to cure it. It's too late to cure it. Or they could just say you've got uh, one month left. Uh, 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 okay, the, 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 that's what it, I don't know whether Susan can help me with that. You can hear me well, Susan? Yes, I can, yeah. Just take myself off mute, yeah. Because I've got a very okay. windy dog here. She's okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, uh, based on what Tony has been talking about, um, when cancer is detected early, is there a way it can be better managed compared to early? Sorry, pardon, say that again, Nif. Okay, I said when cancer is detected early, yeah. is there a way it can be better managed compared to if it's not detected early? Um, yeah, it's always better to, I mean, I was talking to Mandy, my mum had, um, she would have been 93 now so she had bowel cancer for the first time when she was um 58 and the first drop of blood that she saw in her underwear straight away that day she went to the doctors because a bit by chance that I was going to the doctors I was 17 and um I was going to the doctors and I said oh come with me you know she said oh no I've seen some blood and because her mother had died of bowel cancer probably in her 60s but um you know my grandmother never never went to the doctors about it and I was saying to Mandy that my grandmother would have been born in the year uh, in 1900 in the countryside in England in Norfolk and I think the fear of going to hospital was just she was sure because she was scared and and i i was saying that you know like a, a story of how embedded it probably might have been in country people in england back in the sort of it being born in 1900 is i always remember when i was a child um going around in the countryside you'd see a hospital in the middle of nowhere it would say hospital and i used to think i don't end up what why is there a hospital in the middle of nowhere? There's no people there. There's no houses, no village or anything, no town. But as I grew older, I realised that those hospitals were, like Amanda said, asylums. They were mental <laughs> health hospitals where people went and they probably never come home again. So I think for a lot of people of my grandmother's There's generation, of, yeah, exactly. she thought, or you go to hospital, you never come home. So mm. why would you want to voluntarily go? Whereas, so the next generation was my mum's generation and she'd seen her mother born in 1900. My mum was born in 1927. Um, not just let, not let herself die, but not go to hospital to be checked up because she was scared. And she died at, in her early sixties of bowel cancer. Oh. So my mum, when she had her operation, two weeks later, she was getting better and she got completely better for 30 years. And then she had bowel cancer again at 84 and she had an operation, she got completely better. But then it came back at 92 and she was 92 and it was a decision that was made that she would, maybe was not strong enough to have that okay. operation at 92. So yes, definitely my grandmother in her early 60s never went, as far as I'm aware, she didn't go. She was too scared. She just let it take its course and she died prematurely. Whereas my mum lived till 92 and had exactly the same illness, but went straight away, you know? So yeah, so she lived another 30 years longer. Uh, okay. that, that's a very good, good story, at least which if it's shared all over, yeah. uh, people will have confidence in making sure they get to the clinic, to the yeah. hospital. And, oh. and yeah, definitely, I agree. I, I, don't, I feel like I'm batting in now, but I just, to, to get, I'll come back to you, just, you can tell me, just say to me in a minute as well, I've just thought about myself. So now the third generation, when I had, um, when I was a social worker and Mandy knows how stressful it was, <laughs> you know, um, I had, IBS, stress-related IBS. And I remember going to the hospital and because my mum had had cancer twice and my grandmother died of it, they straight away gave me the endoscopy thing to look inside my bowels and I could see where the IBS was, I could see it, but now I know how to control it. If it flares up, I know that's stress-related and I can get rid of it. Um, but interestingly enough now, I don't know if it's because of COVID, I was sent a bowel screening test thing. And basically you have to just get a sample of poo and send it off. But when I opened it, I must have thrown the instructions away. So it said, follow the instructions and post it back and put the date on it. But that sat on the side and they sent me two letters that sat on the side 
probably for about three months now I should know better but that's a, just a general over 50 sort of screening mm-hmm. tool I think for but I should have known better I should have done that straight away but I think I was scared I didn't I you know I, I didn't I couldn't find the instructions I thought oh god I don't picking up the phone and actually asking someone to do but I think part of it was me being scared and I should know better shouldn't I yeah but I've done it now <laughs> but sorry can I go back to you what you were saying because I felt like you, I you, you, you know, you're you, you were asking a question you were saying something. yes yeah but, in. no no you you answered the question well because talking about diagnosing early and um, being able to manage it with the experience of your mother, so which I said is a very good story. If we tell our community about it, uh, they should be eager to get to know about it early so that it can be well managed. Mm. Yes, because if I didn't know that my mum, if I, if my mum hadn't explained to me and talked to me over the years about what my grandmother died of, if she hadn't been open and honest with me and talked to me about that she had it, if she didn't talk to me, um, how would I know to look after my health if I didn't, if no one told me? Then you also mentioned something now. Um, you said stress yeah. wanted to induce something in you concerning uh, uh, IBS, so is it related to cancer? IBS, well, it's irritable bowel syndrome. Yeah. Um, I know that um, w- when they do that check, when they put the endoscopy up, because I remember something with my mum, something about polyps, polyps in the bowel, like little little growths. So say like when they put that, what, so for me, when they did it for me, I cried all the way through. <laughs> So I was semi sedated so that you're you don't really feel too much pain. But I felt the pain when it got to that where the swelling mm. was, where the hot part was, because the the um, the consultant said, oh, maybe we should stop. because I was, it was really hurting and I was crying. I was thinking my grandmother had died of fear and my mom and thinking, oh, this is me. And but he said, oh, we'll stop. But the nurse said, no, 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 keep going, because that's where the problem is going to be. And, and it's all on a screen, like a big TV screen so they can see and I can see. But you can yeah. see all of the bowel. So if there were any polyps in there, which I think my understanding is they would probably know better. They, they can be removed. And if they're not removed, they could, I think. Inflame into a, they could develop into a cancer, I think. I think polyps in the bowel, my understanding, is something that can be sort of lasered out, which can be a preventative thing. So again, like me thinking, you know, saying to my doctor, about my mum and my grandmother, oh yes, of course, straight away, you can go and have the endoscopy. So they can look for other things while they're looking. So it's okay. that preventative stuff, isn't it? So if there, there was no polyps, and I know how to control my IBS now, um, but if there had been polyps, I could have had a referral and probably maybe have them lasered off. I think that's what I'm thinking, you know? So it's just that preventative stuff, isn't it? If I'd have just thought, do you know what? I feel confident this is IBS. When I get stressed, my stomach hurts a lot, you know? And I, I could have just ignored it and just thought, oh, it's just what it is. I thought, no, bearing in mind my mum and my grandmother, it like, almost feels like it's my duty. <laughs> you know, exactly. I feel like I have to myself. My exactly. family, I have that's to go. Well, I don't want it. I cried all the way through it, but I have to go because to go. Well, if not, they've they've so my grandmother died and I've learned nothing. And my mum went through that twice at that stage. Um, and I've learned nothing, have I, if I just ignore it. I have to be brave. Yeah, you have to, so because you don't want to end up the same way as your, your mother yeah. and your grandmom. So it's so, yeah. very important. So this is exactly what we are talking about, fear of going to the doctors, a fear of um of going to for early diagnosis. So um, what we are saying here is that to prevent this, we should all heed the call. Mm. When called to go for breast cancer, what was it called a mammogram? Yes. Am I correct? Mm-hmm. If you went called to go for your colon, uh, no, they, do, they do this check, kind of colonoscopy or something. If I'm correct, I, I'm tr- listen. I'm I don't know why the medical we're all talk is help me. We're all on a learning journey. You want to you know, when they it's call us to play. go for yeah. prostate check, please yeah. do go. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say this. It's a sad story. Uh, it happened just last week. I did not even know it happened. And it's a good, very good friend of mine who helped me through my settling into Milton Keynes. I hope she hears this. I hope she won't be upset with me. I didn't hear for with her. I spoke to her last week. 
I didn't hear. No, something just says, call her. Then I called her yesterday. And then she said, my sister. I said, what happened? She said, my mother died. That's what she told me. I, I felt these goosebumps go over. I said, what? She said, yes, I've not gone to work for a week. What happened? Cancer. How did it happen? It's not here. Wow, why, 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 we're just talking about the same thing. Now, how did it happen? Mother has been going to the doctors. They said it's ulcer, ulcer, ulcer. You know? But on going that last week, just last week, they went in and the woman said, look, I can't cope with this anymore. They just went in and they now diagnosed it after years of complaint that it was stomach cancer and she just died. Sorry, I had to clap because I'm really upset. So mm -hmm. wrong diagnosis as well causes, uh, which is not just in Africa, is everywhere wrong diagnosis by some doctors or by some practitioners also uh, prolongs this problem where people may get the call, they go to the doctors, but they are given the wrong diagnosis and then in the process they die or it's too late to, to, to increase their lifespan. So this is also a big problem, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I think that's where the importance is, um, that, like to be a bit like me with the IBS and don't ignore it, isn't it? You know, because um, you need to keep going back and saying, this still doesn't feel right. And I would say my mum, when she had bowel cancer the second time, <coughs> she did go back to the doctors quite a few times because she had a stoma bag when she was, from when she was 50, oh, I think she was 54, I said 58, didn't I? She was 54. So when she was 54, um, she'd had a stoma bag and she'd gone really well with it. And, um, you know, she was having blood coming from where the stoma bag was. And the doctor had said, she did go more than once. And the doctor said, um, that's quite normal sometimes that does happen and she's thinking what well, after 30 years all of a sudden there's blood and where there never was and but she did go back more than once and then and my sister and she kept but the good thing was she kept telling my sister-in-law who she's very close to she kept telling her and my sister-in-law was very proactive at saying well come on Vera we must we need to take you back then we must keep updating the doctor that you this doesn't feel right and um but she went back and you know and then she lived another well from 84 to 92 so she you know had another uh, you know she did get completely better but that so the second time around that was some um, the same thing but she was persistent she you know well my sister-in-law really was took over if not she probably could have put a sat there and not had the second operation and she would have died quite quickly because when she went when she was 54 the first sign of blood that my she said to the doctor um I'm going to die, aren't I? Because uh, my mum was very much into positive thinking as well. And he said to her, if you think that, then you will. You must not think that, you know. And she said, what would happen if I didn't have the operation? And he said, well, put it this way. It Now at the moment, it's the size of a P, but that will keep multiplying and multiplying and multiplying extremely quickly. I can't remember what he said, but, you know, a month it will be doubled. And then, you know, it's more than doubled the next month it's double double doubled do you know what i mean the double has doubled has doubled and it quickly it was spread really quickly so to get it out of you when it's the size of a pea and they did cut a lot of the the bowel away a lot of a lot um to make sure that there's nothing of it left and that lasted her for 30 years so this makes us now we have to be grateful for the economy we are isn't it which means we've got the right medical equipment medical um uh, practitioners that can treat and diagnose this well that can diagnose this let's say the cancer all sort of cancers on time and well in in milton Keynes, and not just in milton Keynes in england not just in england in the western world so we again now as we now say there's no excuse isn't it so if you go for a first diagnosis and you still feel unwell you keep on going there's no way no matter how long you pressure or persist by pressurizing your doctor say look and I, I still don't feel well can you please mm -hmm. check like your, your mom your, your, your sister did sister she went in twice yeah. sister-in-law she went twice she kept yeah. on going you know even though it was two times she went again uh, we have to just go back no matter how we feel just keep on going back and no if if the diagnosis was wrong or they didn't get all the diagnosis somehow they'll be able to find out um, what they can treat and how they can prevent it inflaming or escalating to um, a, to death to death or to a much more difficult um, situation. This is where the issue of individual responsibility comes in. I want to believe that. Yes, I yes. Also, and I think it's also that thing of like, 
almost like being strong enough, like to know that you need support of family and friends, telling, you know, someone that you trust. Um, and maybe again, that's where um, Macmillan could come in. If you think, oh, I don't want to upset my family and my friends, I don't want to worry them. Perhaps I'll give Macmillan a call or give them an email and wonder if I can go in for a chat, you know, and maybe that that's something because it is the well-being lounge, you know, so that's something that maybe you could say, I really don't want to trouble my family or my friends. Maybe I could have a catch up with it. And I, I don't know whether to go and see the doctor or not, even if it's just them to say, just to give you the confidence that to go. You know, can, can I say, yeah, can I say so? Um, I think a lot of people aren't aware that if you feel your hospital treatment isn't right or the diagnosis isn't quite right they, a lot of people haven't heard of PALS it's the patient advice liaison service um, and you they're, they're sort of advocate for the patient and they can be a, a go between between the patient and your 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 medical team to to, to sort of communicate any any perceived problems uh, and you can google the details and uh, they're very friendly they're very helpful and they do respond quite quickly as well. Okay, so with PALS, uh, you can give them a call. If we Google it, I'll put the information in, they'll give them a call if we're worried about this issue and they can, you can speak with them. Like you see, we can speak to them directly and then they can refer us or they can advise us on who to, where to go. Is that what you mean? Yes, that's right, yes. Yeah, or if you feel something's gone wrong and you've had a bad experience, uh, it could be, and any any sorts of issues and they will advocate for you yeah that, that is true because um, about 10 years ago i had some problems with my eyes and i had to go to steg mandeville and i was in for a week and um i come home came home and i should have had a follow-up um consultation but somehow or another they forgot to send me out a follow-up but they should have i should have gone back in to see them to see how my eyes were um and they didn't do it and I phoned pals and said um at Stag Mandeville and said this situation I should and I want them to look at my eyes and um they were a middle person but and they did chase it up uh, you know and there was all but the the issue was that some somebody did say that they had forgotten it but they offered the hospital offered me I couldn't drive because I couldn't see to drive properly but I had to come back to work and Stag Mandeville offered me an appointment like Oh, yes, you can, you can come down in an hour and a half. And I couldn't I'd have to get someone to drive me from Bedford to Stake Mandeville. I'd get my son, who was 17, then to come out. He was at uh, college, and I used to pay him a bit of pocket money to drive me places. Um, he was learning. To, I think he passed his test then. He passed at 17. Um, but I would have had to get him to sort himself out and get myself over to my... But what I noticed was, I think that they had ticked the box that they had offered me an appointment, and I declined it. Um, okay. Because after that, they didn't offer me another follow-up appointment. Um, but then I ended up going back into hospital for another week. Um, and I just wondered if I'd been seen. It was awful. It was very awful. But I did get pals involved and they, they did help as much as they could. Because it's, sometimes you sit there and you don't know, you don't know who to turn to. to, turn to yes. you know, who, who can I ask? You know, who can I... You don't want to burden people with this. Do you want a professional, neutral person to say do this do that or i'll give them a call or what would you yeah. like to give them a call or whatever so pals are they are very very good and they are very good yeah to help you you have the confidence to be a bit more is it shares the burden of not the burden it shares the task of being more persistent Absolutely. Yeah. so this is yeah thank you so much for that you know i don't you know i've always seen that word pals but i never do yeah <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know what it's for <laughs> if you hadn't mentioned it now i mean all of it. No. <laughs> but now, at least now we, we now know do you know yeah. i know when you go to the courts you've got um what is another name they call those team that also serve, serve like intermediary they go with you instead of a, a solicitor they go with you in place of a solicitor to support you well in court and none of that but then see most people didn't know of this because all we know is that you're having an if you've got an issue call 111 call 911 or go to the gp you know, but this is another vital information. I've added this on the chat. I've found the meaning. I've added it as well. So please, if you're out there, if you're struggling, this is another channel where you can get support if you are afraid of who to speak with, just as Mandy and Susan has just um, informed us. So 
talking about China, we're just going to um, a section of one of your questions, Susan, that says, what sort of places and channels do you think could be better utilized to help people understand the services on offer and access this? So this is one of the channels, isn't it? Uh, are there any places in the community you like? Uh, you might more likely to seek support? And what sort of things would an organization like Macmillan need to take into account when trying to assess these channels? So we've talked about language barrier. We've talked about really, we've not talked about religious practice, and we don't want to go there because it's a very complicated discussion. But it is one of the barriers, isn't it? It's one of the things Macmillan has to understand that people have different religious practices, be Muslim, Christian, pagan, you know, uh, you don't want to create conflict, but it's just about meeting with them. Like you say, if you go to the well-being lounge, sit with them, let them understand what your faith is, what your religion is saying about that. But then it's not left to the Macmillan team to make them understand that, look, this is a medical problem. Is it, is it a, 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 what do you call it, do or die? Whether it's either you live or you die. So the patient has to make a choice, isn't it? So the religion is a very, very tricky and complicated discussion and on this platform we try not to, if you know what I mean talk about it because it causes conflict uh, cultural differences is very important um, when I was um, well in Africa I'm, I'm an African so an African that is in here will have the same mentality as myself but not maybe not the same but almost the same when someone says oh I had a child through, through a cesarean you know Oh, I'm going to have the doctor said I'm going to have a child through cesarean, not natural birth. They think it's a taboo to have children through cesarean. They think, oh, oh am I wrong, Mr. Bumi? They'll say it's yeah, not. Yeah, it's, yeah, it, yeah, your point. They'll your say point. it's not, oh, you should have it the normal way. They feel, I don't know how to use the word. It's like superstitious. It's, oh, it's not very good for you to have a baby via cancer and cesarean. But I've had more of my kids via cesarean. And I don't think it's a taboo. It helped me. It saved me. Both of them, mm -hmm. had, they were all high risk kids. If I had, Think, thought about this taboo and this superstition, I wouldn't have gone in for the, for the cesarean. So it's all about understanding these cultural differences and sitting with the medical professional and then trying to break them into bits and pieces, touching every individual where the problem is and see how it can be, they can understand that this is important. Mm -hmm. Let's take the vaccination, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, most people say, oh, I don't want to take the vaccine, it's got... Uh, What's it called? Some people say it's got magnet in it. It's got di digital ideas. It's got that idea. You know, some people say, oh, we can't take it because they've put something else in there that will make people go crazy. You know? But you need a vaccine. <laughs> Let's be sure. <laughs> you need it. Let's not... You can't play around the bush. This is going to save you. If it's going to save your life, go mm -hmm. for it. Go for it. You know, it's people, that's, if, if you don't want to, then that's fine. So it's all about different mentality, different ideals, different um, mm. understanding. And it is a big, uh, especially within the African community, we've got loose, loose uh, different tribes, different language, thousands of languages, thousands of cultures, thousands of um, religion. It's, I cannot break it down. And being able to connect, you know, to make them understand that coming out, speaking about this issue can save mm. your lives can help them live better, learn how to manage it. And also they could even survive it. They could even survive it. I have a friend, I'm just gonna to speak to one more example. What are we talking about? Just let people know that these things are doable. The support system is there. Uh, people have been healed from it. People, unfortunately, have died from it because of poor diagnosis. And also, uh, uh, you know, it, despite our differences, you know, there's a solution to it. I have a good friend of mine who, we, we, yeah, he had cancer twice. He had it, um, it's blood cancer, I think. That, well, sorry, if you, you know what it's, it's leukemia, leukemia. Leukemia. <laughs> leukemia. So he had it um, some years back and then he came back. But the second time ago, um, it's a testimony, so I'm going to say, it. he now went again a few years ago and then they, they, they were shot. According to the gentleman, they took, I thought, according to him, he said he now, he's now got new blood in the system. I don't know how they did it. They cleared off the bad blood, put in the new one. Don't ask me, I don't know. But this man that had cancer, or that had leukemia, that could not speak, that could not eat, his hair was falling off. He's traveling all over the world. He's going everywhere. He's living well. You know, he's well. He's fine. He's gone off. The so there is treatment for it. May not be everything, but we, it, they may not 
not all of them may be treated, not all of them may not be treated, but there is an opportunity to get help. Okay. You know, I believe that what normally guides the belief system of some of our Black community has to do with what is called myth. Myth. Miss. Myth, yes. Myth. Myth, yeah. yes, myth. absolutely, myth. yes. <laughs> you understand, a lot of myth is guiding the thinking, the belief system, which we need to get out of because there are so many scientific breakthroughs that we have in the developed world that can address some of the diseases that we face. But sometimes we just have this myth around all these things. And in the process, we are unable to get the necessary diagnosis or let me say necessary treatment for something that is yes. Yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. You've just nailed the, the whole issue we're talking about with cultural differences here with those words, the myths and the beliefs. So if we can allow ourselves to be open to all options of treatment, we're going to go a long, long way. Absolutely. That is what we need. So based on what we've talked now, Susan, you've got a, a bit of idea of what is causing the barriers. Mm. You've got a bit of idea of what may it's not just the barriers from the individual responsibilities also could also be barriers from the medical diagnostic um, team we're not saying it happens here in england but no it doesn't but um that's another issue i uh, you've, you've seen all the areas that we, you wanted um queries on uh what um what else do you think the macmillan team will need to know or can do yeah so that they can, they can penetrate more yeah i think they need to they want to know about groups um where groups get together um people that they can contact um to um to come and visit people or to do their zoom meetings so they need to know um, where people get together uh, and how they get together and how they communicate and how people communicate um, information uh, and also um, names of people and, and contact details of people who they can um, make contact with. Um, um, Sue, would they um, would they need to know the details of, say, community leaders? I know, um, for example, imams have encouraged communities to accept the COVID vaccination. I, I don't know if if that applies here. Um, yeah. Sort of. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think it's, I think I'm, I'm going to help you out, sorry, I think that's very vital, very yeah. important, because there are some community groups that I am a member of, and one of the, most of the discussions we have is all based about cancer, they always have someone coming there to talk about cancer, we always have a doctor or a GP coming there, so yes, um, there are some community leaders that we know, um, Susan, I'll give that to you <coughs> later on, I've told you before, and then you can then contact them and also contact them on your behalf mm. so they can reach out to you and um, see how you can work with them mm. and not just that we've got a few other people who's on that who's had issues with cancer as well who are helping other people within the community that have cancer issues so i, will, if, I want to be able to connect them to you mm. so you can um, liaise with them and introduce them to the macmillan group as well so mm. yes does Macmillan give treatment or because, uh, let me say, give, uh, make you aware? Yeah, so this is more of the, the support, yeah, to support you, to make you aware. So say like the dietitian, let's say, for example, the dietitians, um, you know, like my mum, when she's, um, when she had her bowel cancer, there's certain things that she shouldn't really eat, um, and certain things that she should eat. I don't know, things like after she, you know when she has a soma bag she shouldn't really she shouldn't really eat apples with feelings on and thing and there's all that sort of thing you know like you, you, sorry you talk about apples <laughs> <laughs> the dietitians they get that practical i would imagine i'm imagining i'm guessing okay all right okay. give you practical advice but when <laughs> but when your body changed like, that's a massive change that you don't yes. basically go to the toilet like you normally would you've got this soma bag and sometimes it will work like 
crazy and it's filling up like diarrhea or whatever would you do but if you can talk to the can the macmillan nurse the dietitian to say oh she can say let's think what have you eaten oh you've eaten an apple you've eaten an apple with the peeling on it did you you know did you realize mm. take the peel off and you're the new way that your bowel works can um can process it better so all of those because that's distressing all those sort of things or you might be eating the wrong things that you know oh, I don't make when you felt after you've had an operation that makes you feel like or when there's chemotherapy I don't know maybe there's things you should eat or shouldn't eat you know or um so I would like to think they're the sort of person you can contact them and they can give you all right, you all right. sorry you mentioned something very profound now you talked about chemotherapy mm. okay um which looks like um, chemotherapy from my understanding correct me if I'm wrong that it's like an alternative um, um, treatment, alternative to Western treatment. Am I correct? Yeah. When the, so the both times when my mum had her cancer operation, she didn't have any chemotherapy. So she having bowel cancer, they take for her. They took parts of the bowel away, and they were confident that they'd got all of the cancer out, which must have been correct. And she didn't have any chemotherapy. She had some. She had it cut out, um, okay. which was successful for her. Uh, okay. which I think is quite I think that's quite easy not easy but I think that's quite a oh, was then a, quite a common practice for bowel cancer because you've got so much bowel you can oh. cut quite a lot of it away um okay. and um yeah so um that's so that's something that Faye would I think okay about. just a quick one before um, Tonya comes in now mm -hmm. it has to do with um um, I don't know whether it's right for me to ask this question in terms of, okay, based on the people that Macmillan, you know, uh, Macmillan has worked with over the, the period of existence and all that kind of a thing, with advice, with support, with treatment and all that. Um, at least you talk about an example of your mother can you just weigh in terms of what should I put it, figure statistics and say, okay, at least, you know, they've gotten this number and this number have come out well, roughly. Or you, and if you don't have the figures, don't bother about it. No, I, I don't know, but it's a really brilliant question. I think that's a question definitely to um to ask Faye to see what they probably I would imagine that they would have figures of how many yeah. people have supported and um to, you know, sort of how many people have come for dietitian advice how many people have come for psychological advice because also you know the emotional the emotional side of it is is, is really it's really massive because i know like sometimes you know when you have an operation you can people can think okay right i'm gonna have my operation right that's gonna be great i'm nervous but i'm gonna have it and i'll be better and then you get home and it's like whew, you can feel very low and very like <laughs> shock and so I think that you know this like so yeah it's important to it is important to know that how many people they've helped I imagine a lot but yeah, because, like that because I know one thing about the African community we like yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. testimonies you, you know yeah, that yeah, exactly. oh this yeah. person that person yeah. this mm. number you understand yeah. those things you know stay up what I can call the faith inside yeah. of them to say, okay, let me go for this. You know, if you don't try it, you're not going to see whether you're going to survive or something. Definitely. And I think that's a really good thing for Macmillan to know that lots of groups want to know facts and figures. They want to know the figures. How many people have you helped? And, and in what way have you helped X amount of people? I think that's a good thing for them to know um, that certain groups want to know that to have confidence. You know, so that's a really good, a good thing that... Um, we can let them know the groups want to know the figures Absolutely. yeah important uh, I've, I've heard of mac well we all know about macmillan they've worked yeah. within the i don't know if they work internationally i hope so but within the uk they've done a lot of um, fantastic they do they, they've got like a, is it a marathon race for cancer and all that if i'm wrong yeah, they've think, helped yeah they, they've got so many programs that have cancer they also raise funds for cancer as well. So they have done a lot. Yes, we do need the facts and figures. And uh, you should get that ready as well for when they come into your, if you have your show, your meeting on Tuesday, 20th. Yes. Uh, that could help help the people too. Yeah, so, let me make a little note of that because it's yeah. not, I haven't got my emails up. It's really important, yeah. Um, facts and figures. Can help me remember that. <laughs> some yeah. good facts and figures. Let's see if I can get some from Faye by um, Tuesday. 
Yes. <laughs> Even so, though I can find out. Yeah. <laughs> let me just quickly write that. We are facts yeah. and figures. Thank you, Bumi, yeah. for that. Point. Um, I've got um, a good friend of mine here. If um, Suze, Stella, do you want to say anything? Stella Cole, she's a, a solicitor. Um, if she's still there, I don't know if she's still there. <laughs> maybe she's, um, she, she just had a newborn baby. So maybe she's attending to the baby. So we'll Wonderful. forgive you for now. <laughs> no, no, no problem. That's, that, we'll leave it. That's, a, that, that's a good one. That's it a good is one. a good one, yes. So. Yes, um, I know I did, we'll be rounding up now and listen, Susan, Mandy, Bumi, we've done, we've done, um, we've done, a, we've got done a good job with this information. So we're just going to recap, if you don't mind, if we, if I mention okay. one, you mention one, Mandy mentioned one, Susan mentioned, of the support system we've got for cancer, what we've discussed so far, where can the people go, who can they meet, uh, just mention the names and then... Uh, and then before we do that, I forgot, you know, you've got a meeting on Tuesday. Can you just give us a brief information about that? About that. Yeah. So on Tuesday, um, Community Action are doing two sessions. So one's at, oh, I hope it's 11 in the morning. Mm-hmm. And there's one in the evening, which I think is at seven o'clock. I'll double have to double check. Seven one. to eight, seven okay. to eight, and mm-hmm. then eight. Mm-hmm. So is it 11 to, was it 11 to 12 in the morning? Is that right in your memory? <laughs> I haven't got it in front of me. Let me uh, I definitely haven't got it in front of me. Um, so it's Tuesday morning um, and it's uh, in the evening, 7 till 8 and 11 till 12 on Tuesday. And it's for an hour and it's a Zoom session. And it's a com- it'll be a conversation for people um, to be able to give Macmillan ideas. So it's just the two questions. Um, it's two questions one um what can can um people give Macmillan some ideas about what the barriers are so that they can try and uh build their work in accordance to what people think those barriers are and um then the second question is um what channels could Macmillan use to um engage with groups uh, so it's just those two questions so it would be it would be um five minutes just outlining the project and the aims and then 20 minute discussion on the first question 20 minute discussion on the second session if it's quite a lot of people that come we may uh set people off into a couple of little groups um if if there's not too many we'll we'll just do it all in one group together and then we'll make some notes there might be another person there from community action as well maybe just to take some notes um so that's tuesday and then so when we do or people if they don't want to join in a group they can do um a one-to-one session we can just talk on the phone or do a zoom meeting just if they've got any ideas and then tips from mcmillan um and then what we're hoping to do is from the information that people give us on Tuesday or over some one-to-one sessions in the next couple of weeks. Um, in September, we're hoping to do a face-to-face um, session. And I would like it to be a bit of a networking session as well for people. Um, for thinking of doing an outdoor, sort of indoor-outdoor sort of venue. When we did a networking session once before with Community Action, which was really successful, we did it at the Cricket Pavilion and um, we had, you know, we had a general discussion and then people went off into groups to walk and talk and chat, you know, so each group would sort of maybe hopefully have someone from community action or someone sort of taking note on a paper in their head of ideas that people have come come up with and they could walk and talk around Camel Park, which was really quite nice, and then come back together and, and just maybe discuss the ideas that they've had. So that's how we would quite like to see it, perhaps in September, but based on what people are telling us now, and then um, Macmillan want to um, really keep keep the project going. Not it's not just a stop in September, write a report, and that's the end of it. They want to carry on going out into communities and working with communities. That's what Faye really wants to do to get out into the communities. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's good. So, um, so that's what now we know. Yeah, and I'm just thinking, you know. Uh, the black community will like events like fairs and all that so um if you i don't know what you call it if the macmillan community want to reach out to the community as well mm-hmm. to try and organize like a little fair 
whereby yeah. you bring just in because, yeah? Um, yeah stalls yeah. you have you have the community to take stalls yeah, yeah then it. you within that I don't know how you're going to do it but they love that and that will then you now have a session in there where people can come in and speak with the advisors and the the organizers maybe that way they'll have more another way of more confidence to to speak out yeah uh, so perhaps that's what we could do in september do like a little fair with some schools and things that's quite yeah, relaxing. That'd, that'd be, exactly that would be beautiful that would be nice they would love that there's a lot of people out there struggling again please if you're out there susan can you give us the phone number for that event on saturday or how do the link have you got the link on tuesday on Tuesday, sorry. Tuesday, Tuesday. Yeah, so I've got the link, but I think maybe the best thing for me to do is to um, email you the links. Is that okay? You want to uh, share it on the chat? Can you share it? Right. Copy and paste. Let's try and find it. Bear with me. <laughs> yeah, so if I go into my... Did I email them to you? Um, oh, <laughs> it's like long, it's been a long hot day, hasn't it? Uh, let's find. If I go on to, that's okay. I can do it. Um, um, right, go into my calendar for next Tuesday. So on the twentieth. So I I've got the flyer. Eleven to twelve. Let's see what I've got. So. This is my, so this is the link for the morning one. So um, I'll put that on. I put that, um, I'll put that on. I'll just put that above the Irene Crosswell at Millen Wellbeing Lab. Can I put that on top there? Is yeah, that just, okay? Let's just paste it on the chat, yeah. To oh, everyone, the, the one that yeah. says everyone. Oh, I don't want to the chat, right? I might need money to help me. Let's see if I can go on to Oh, no, no, I'm okay. I think. Uh, no, I think to come oh, no, no, I think I'm all right. I think I'm all right. Right, okay. So, this is the 11 a.m. Um, group session, right? That's 20th and the 7th. And you want? So, here. Uh, so here's the link for that one. Um, has that come up? Um, did you send it directly to me? If you click at the top there, it says two. Uh, click it, share it to everyone, not Antonia. I'm well, sure I think message. you sent it. You know, you know, we've got the chat. Everyone, yeah. Yeah, right. to everyone. Yeah, got you know it. That, that yes, one. Okay. Yeah, exactly. It's coming. <laughs> That's a 7pm one um, group session. Can work, can work well, can't it? So 7pm group session starts at 20th of the 7th, 2021. So, right, let's find that one. Mm -hmm. No worries, no worries. I'm just <laughs> trying to add all the information yeah. you've provided to the Yep. So that's that one. Right. So the evening one, seven to eight, is gonna be this one. Right. Right. Oh go back, but not happy. Yeah, that's just be easy. All they'll need to do is just yeah. click on it and, and join. Definitely, yeah. Chat. Right, so um, here we go. So Fantastic. that should be okay. Is that clickable? Can you click? Or is that actually? Clickable? Yes. Um, <laughs> it's not showing as um, a link on the. Let me see. Let me. Unless people can cut and paste it. And yes, go. that's what I mean. Well, let me just see if we yeah. can. So when I added it onto Facebook, it came up as a link. So don't worry about it. No, yeah. by, the time you, by the time it speaks. Um, it, it, will, it will serve as a, it will, because it looks like a, a link. It's just not showing the color, the, you know, the Shall color. Put, yeah. Shall I put my email address as well? I've just added info at communityactionmk.org. Is that all right? I put, shall I put mine as well? Yes, um, and your phone number as well. You, yeah, that's fine, yeah. Thank yeah. you. Actionmk.org. 
Org. So, um, so there's that one, Susan at communication.co.org, email Susan if you needed, and then Susan's number. Um, Fantastic. <laughs> right. Thank you so, so much. And um, I cannot thank you enough, Susan. So all that are on the chat and also on the on the Facebook Live. And then um, after this event, I will try and copy and send them. I've sent out the flyers anyway on, on, on Wednesday when we spoke. And I believe some people have said that they're filling in the questionnaire, the survey as well. Yes. Um, do should, you I put link, should I put a link to the questionnaire or do I not need to? Yes, please, please. Can you do that? Right, I'll that one. Yeah. questionnaire they can come through anonymously or which is very helpful really yeah. is people can put their contact details if they choose to they don't have to um, but there is a section there that you can. that should be okay um that should be a link i hope it's a link again if anybody can't click onto that link it doesn't look clickable does it um hold on i will see now let me just um it's, it's supposed to be one word isn't it well that's i've done my own little link you see um okay okay <laughs> don't worry i think um you gave me the link, so I will try and look for it and join it and add yeah. it here. Is that all right? Uh, yeah, I'm trying to see if I can join the words together. Let's see, maybe they... uh, okay, no, it's, it's not coming up. I said, but don't worry. Fantastic. So I just want to say thank you very much, Susan, mm -hmm. for coming on board today. And mm -hmm. thank you for sharing this uh, lovely insight. So before we close again, just let's just name the places that we think um, the community can um get support so i'm going to say pals patients <laughs> i'm going to, i'm stealing your idea mandy <laughs> i am an idea still i'm just joking it's going to be the patient advice and liaison service that's, that's it that's one that's pals <laughs> and then um mandy where do you think the community can go in to get the support uh community leaders community leaders and that means all african community leaders leaders if you're struggling please go to them and they can link you up with macmillan and hopefully by then macmillan will have link, linked up with them susan yeah i think macmillan cancer support Fay definitely Fay is very lovely and she'll welcome people <laughs> to, to make contact so um yeah you can contact um the um the uh, irene the the Wellbeing Lounge, yeah, you can contact them. <coughs> Fantastic. And uh, Bumi? Community groups. Um, community groups. Community groups, very important. And uh, that's very important as well. And also don't forget the Citizens Advice Bureau. Uh, if you don't know what to do, go to them. They'll, they've got all the links and all the details and that would help. Please don't be quiet, speak out, say what's on your mind, share your pain so you can get the gain. And again, it's in getting good treatment, getting good diagnosis, getting good treatment. And who and 
but hopefully live longer as well. So that is the gain for sharing your pain. Thank you so much, Suzanne, for um, coming on board today. And hopefully we'll be having fair here as well to go into details of this issue yes. that we're having. And then I will see you definitely on Tuesday. I will be there. I've told you my time, so I'm going to say it online just in case people decide to come when I'm coming. <laughs> like, boomy. <laughs> I'm just joking. So, by Mandy, um, thank you as well for supporting us today. Very, very, been very helpful. Um, and our co host, Mr. Bumi, so much. Thank you. Stella, thank you all for joining today. And I'm going to say good night to everyone and talk to you in two weeks' time. All right. Thank you all. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye.